Hi guys, another video attempt. I was editing a video and it was just making no sense and it was super long, so I'm just gonna film this again and try and keep this simple. This is a response video to the upload I made about this warning where I saw this vision and Jesus said that he didn't know me. And I want to clarify some things. So first of all, before I say anything else, I do believe that you are saved by grace through faith. However, a lot of us have a different opinion on what the word grace means, biblically speaking. And as far as I've studied and read the Bible, grace actually does mean that there's a power given to you through the blood of Jesus to be able to overcome evil. And as much as you want to value that grace and truly want to turn from your ways, you do have the power to do it. Now, do I believe that anyone on this earth is going to be 100% perfect? I don't. However, I do believe that if you do have a habitual sin that you are okay with and you're you're planning on living like that for the rest of your life I do believe that that is a dangerous place but th this video wasn't pointed towards every single person this video was pointed towards certain people that may have given their life to Christ at one point and probably say that they believe in Jesus and they profess that with their mouths but they're not actually living in the power of God they're not actually um, following Jesus they are not actually understanding that the grace of Jesus Christ that the blood change you from the inside out it is destined to be and I think a lot of Christians don't understand this. I had one man argue with me recently and he was telling me that you could literally live a life of just loving the devil and hating God and die and you can go to heaven if you gave your life to Christ and whether that may actually in a sense theoretically be true, I know that the real result of receiving grace in Jesus Christ actually gives you the desire to turn from your ways. There is no way if God is living inside of you that there's going to be no transformation process and no good fruit that is multiplying in your life. It is bound to happen. It is your God-given destiny. And when you welcome him inside of you, now the kingdom of heaven and God's own spirit is planted inside of you. You have a soul tie with God. Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. And I'm speaking to myself because as I recently confessed that I do struggle with sin and pornography and smoke cigarettes and stuff and I'm battling these things myself and I'm not here to act like I'm perfect. You know, I'm just reading it with my naked eyes, I see what it says. And just about in every single book in the Bible, just almost any page you turn on to, it has this theme about turning from your wicked ways, Old and New Testament, guys. It's very clear. And the most specific kind of person that I know that this video wasn't for was the kind of person that is battling condemnation. If you feel like you have no hope and that you are just giving up and there's no way yet, you know, you you know, you just feel like you're going to hell and there's no way you could turn from your ways and stuff, like that video isn't for you. When you feel when when I personally have gone to think that it's okay to like sin more and stuff. I realize there's the, there's a there's a time to be convicted of that. But then when there's a time when I'm just beating myself down and I'm not actually feeling close to God, it's actually a time when God is graceful and merciful. You see guys, the whole point in Christianity, the whole point in Jesus Christ was the mystery of the truth. Okay, because the Pharisees knew the truth, but the love of the truth was the mystery. It was the fact that Jesus died and through his love he did everything he did for us. He did pay the price for our sins. And when you receive that grace, there is literally a divine power that will plant good fruit in you, that will transform you if you believe it, if you receive it in your heart through Jesus Christ. And so what I've seen is that, you know, I was battling condemnation really bad when I did post that warning video. I was. And so I, because of that, I want to apologize and say that I feel like I may have said things in a very despairing way. Okay? God is not a spirit of fear. His perfect love casts out all fears. The biggest, most important thing to know is that God is your dad. He'll never hurt you. He really does love you. He loves you more than the whole universe he created. He wants to give everything to you. As a matter of fact, he has. He's prepared even his kingdom for you. And when you receive Jesus Christ in your heart, you are actually getting rid of all of these guilts and shames and burdens and following him. It is very easy. It's merciful. It's not hard. As a matter of fact, it's something that you will begin to naturally desire as you get closer to God. Now, I just want to just pick up on that a little bit. I do believe that there's a process. You know how there's like people that say that like they give their life to Christ and literally overnight like all of their like addictions and everything just leave? I think for most people it's not like that. And I do believe that there is this process, this lifelong process in just being fixed and being more right with God. Even though you're already right with Him in the first place, here's the thing.
okay I believe that there may have been some things because I was going through things and I don't believe that I was disobedient in what I did I really do believe that God told me to share that message with as many people as I could and I did so this is where this video may go a little off topic but I do want to clarify some things because it's like there's multiple groups of people I'm talking to first of all I'm not necessarily here to argue about theology I see all these people giving me Arminian beliefs and Calvinist beliefs and that's great but especially in regards to this topic the only difference in your beliefs is whether you can lose your salvation or if you were never saved in the first place and that's the only difference between these two beliefs I will openly admit that I am neither Calvinist nor Arminian however right now in my life I am more on the Calvinist side of theology just because of the fruit that has been being multiplied in my own life about it. Sometimes I'm more Arminian in my theology. Other times I'm more Calvinist. Right now I just happen to be more Calvinist. But back to the main point, I really want to clarify some things about the real gospel. Since that video has been posted, I have been battling my condemnation and getting rid of it. Because condemnation is not of God. It doesn't get you closer to God. It's not your walk with God. It's not what it means to be a Christian. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is my strength. There is no godly strength in condemning yourself. And the way that I stopped condemning myself was realizing that I cannot change myself. Even though I knew this theoretically, I still battled with it in my heart. And so the most important thing that God has showed me is his personal love to me. The thing that I really missed the most in that last video was how to overcome sin. But what I need to express once again is that it's his loving kindness that leads us to repentance. And really the power in the gospel of Jesus Christ isn't just asking for forgiveness of your sins. It is receiving his love in your heart. When you do receive God's love, it will naturally make you want to turn from your ways even more. Have you ever had that where you just get so close to God and in that moment, you just, you just like look at your sin and you're just like, that's disgusting. Like, I don't want that. The more you spend time with the Holy Spirit, the more you understand how much Jesus died for you and you understand the power of his death and resurrection and life and how much he gave you that to be just like him, the more power you have over all darkness. And that's the thing that I didn't say in previous videos. That's something that I had to relearn myself just recently, especially when I battle condemnation. I understand that battle. When you first gave your life to Christ and you felt the Holy Spirit, do you remember how much you felt one with God? Do you remember feeling his love for the first time and not just knowing on a theoretical, mental or emotional level that he's real, but knowing God personally because he literally showed himself to you? He's literally with you? And you just knew how much he really loved you and, and how you were literally everything to him. That never left you. There's no way that you can sin and God will love you any less. He will always love you the same and he loves you. But I do believe that there is a danger in when God's love offering to you is there and you are literally saying no to it. Like I said, I'm not here to argue theology. There's a lot of things I don't know. Judas could have repented. Judas could have accepted Jesus. Judas ran away from God. Jesus said that it would be better for Judas to have never been born. Judas was condemning himself. Judas tried to take this work up on his own hands. You see how all of that happens at the same time? It's divine. Because there was a grace in Jesus Christ. There was a grace in his death and his resurrection where we don't have to take it up in our hands anymore. And yet, because we have the free will to do whatever we want and because we are thankful and we know God's love and he's in us, there is a divine change in us. It's natural. But regardless, I just wanted to clarify some things. I hope this video makes sense. That video about Jesus saying he never knew me was not for someone who is already struggling with condemnation and feels like they can't ever make themselves right to Jesus because that's not the right mindset. You have a different battle that takes different words, different discussions. It's a different topic. And so that's as far as I want to go. I have really sought that the only thing that has gotten me closer to Jesus is accepting the fact that he loves me. I do believe this. I am believing this, that I will turn from all of my ways, not just because I have the sovereign will to decide that in Jesus' name, but more importantly, because God has a supernatural power and grace to get me through everything that I am battling with. If anyone has truly received Jesus in their hearts, there has been a desire to live for God and to seek God planted inside of them by God. And in the end, it's actually not hardcore and fire and brimstone. And the ultimate result of being a mature Christian is actually being in his love and his joy and his peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. It's actually good. 
The Holy Spirit loves you. You literally have the kingdom of heaven in all of its glory shining over you, in you. The one who created the kingdom of heaven, the one who is the king of kings, the lord of lords, that spirit, that glory is inside of you. He's going to walk with you. Do you believe in him? And that's where the root belief does actually produce fruit. If you believe in God, just believing alone, that can give you good fruit. But I noticed that, a, a, that faith in God does produce work. It does. Yeah, you don't work your way to salvation. But works is evidence that you are saved, that you are walking with Jesus. Regardless of how many good works you are absent of right now in life, it's theoretically destined to happen according to Jesus Christ, according to the Bible, according to every disciple. I want to close this video and let you know that Jesus Christ is full of hope. And it's not a hope for you to just to try and grasp in your mind. It's a hope that actually has power and authority over the whole universe. It's the hope of Jesus Christ. But just remember, it is his loving kindness that leads us to repentance. God does not delight in the strength of a man, nor in the legs of the horse. He delights in those who fear him, in those who hope in his mercy. You know, and I've had to learn this, and I've had I've had good mentors in my recent past um, explain to me, God isn't necessarily worried about how good and righteous you're living right now. What he's actually worried about is how much you know him, and how much he is allowed to heal you. Because God's a healer. He's going to heal you. He's not going to expect you to run a marathon with a broken foot. So now that I said all this, I hope that my theology is a little better understood. It has been sharpened since that video. I just want to be completely honest, and if I can help people, then I want to.